There are four main sections to the BIME interface. Firstly, data sources. Here in our data sources library, we can see all of the different data we've created connections to. By selecting a data source, we can then see all of the queries that have been generated using this data. By clicking on a query, we can choose to either edit it, delete, duplicate it, and even share it in any of these different formats. In terms of the data source itself, I can create a new query, edit the data source properties, duplicate, delete it, and even automatically generate a dashboard using this data. In the queries section of the interface, we can see all of the queries that have been generated from all of the different data sources. I can select multiple queries here and send them to a dashboard. I can share, edit, duplicate, and delete the query from here. Next, we have the dashboard section. Here we can see all of the different dashboards we've created using our data sources. We can edit, open, duplicate, and delete the dashboards from here. Finally, we have the admin section where we can modify various settings for our BIME account. In this first tab, we can select an image file which can be displayed on the login page of dashboards and the studio. Select the default chart colors. Select various Excel export options. And by checking this box, you can grant account access to our BIME support team. From this tab, we can manage studio users, those who can access the studio to create data sources, queries, and dashboards. You can modify the user's credentials, select a time zone, and even select a language. From this tab here, we can manage dashboard viewers. Here we can see the different groups of dashboard viewers available in our account. We can bulk import from a CSV file to create new groups and users as well as doing so from these buttons here. You can also manage email subscriptions from the admin section. We can schedule a delivery by delivering a specific dashboard to a specific authorized group at a specified time in any of these formats with a subject and message. We can also select only to send the email if a condition is met. The BIME scheduler is used to refresh any data sources that use local files. It's used in conjunction with the BIME desktop, which can be downloaded from here. However, if any of your data sources are accessible online, you should use the online scheduler, which is available in the storage menu options of your connections. That's to say your data sources. We'll take a closer look at this in one of the next videos. From here, we can manage storage. That's to say any instances of bind DB you may have created. You can even create an instance from here as well. We can choose the territory in which your bind DB will be based. With no restriction or with specific IP addresses restricted. From this tab here, we can define fine-grained authorizations on connections and dashboards. So for each user in the studio, we can specify who can view, save queries, edit, and edit the data source. For dashboards, who can view and edit, deliver, and publish. You can manage security settings from this tab here by activating Google, Salesforce, LinkedIn, or Google Apps authentication, as well as enabling SAML. From here, you can manage the BIME API, and from here, you can see what's included in your billing plan. Down at the bottom here on the left, we have a search everything function. So for example, if you wanted to find these videos again, 
you can see them from here or even the documentation. 